Hello, uh, my name's Lisa, if you don't know that already. Uh, I am doing a new video today. Um, it's going to be Christmas themed, if you can tell. Uh, so, um, I wrote, write a blog. Um, I started writing it when I was a student and then kind of got out of the habit of it. And then I started it up again recently um, and wrote a blog uh, entry about differences between Christmas uh, in England and uh, the States uh, based on my experience. Um, so I thought, well, why not do a video version of that for YouTube? Um, I might talk about something else that uh, is not mentioned in my blog because something I've always been curious about. So um, there's going to be about like 18 different uh, things I'll be talking about. So I hope it's not going to be too long, but I know some of the things I, I talked about, um, I think I was probably incorrect on, but that's just based on an assumption with living in the UK. Um, anyhow, um, this is all just based on my experience growing up in the in Midwest in the United States and being from a middle class white family and then being in the UK and England. But Wales and Scotland will have um, probably different traditions. So um, anyhow, um, so to start off with, uh, one main difference I have noticed is um, with how you refer to Santa, um, whether it's Santa Claus, Father Christmas, um, Kris Kringle, that sort of thing. Um, Father Christmas is more what it's referred to, I think, in the here in the UK. However, I know Santa Claus is used as well, um, but it was always Santa Claus growing up in the States. Um, so that's the first one. It's minor, but I know different countries refer to it in different languages. Um, um, and then there's also where Santa's from. Um, where growing up, it was always the North Pole. He lives in the North Pole with all his elves and his uh, reindeer. And uh, here it's Lapland. Um, you can actually go to Lapland as well and like have a holiday there and meet Santa, which honestly sounds like a lot of fun. Um, it, it's more common to say that uh, Santa is from like a Nordic background rather than some sort of magical background that I don't actually know um, other than like the saint uh, that was Santa. I think it was a saint. I remember there was an actual Santa Claus, um, which is what it's based off of. Um, so the third thing is about presents. Um, now, one thing that kind of shocked me, um, and in, in all honesty, it's actually not such a bad idea, um, is not opening any Christmas presents until actual Christmas day. Like, even if like you exchange it between friends, you you wait to open it. Um, and I kind of like the idea because it's like it means you, you know, you've not like gotten Christmas all out of the way before Christmas Day. But at the same time, I'm used to like we when I was a kid growing up, I think we'd be allowed to have something on Christmas Eve. Usually it'd be something my mom couldn't be bothered to wrap up. I remember one time she just gave me like a thing of five DVDs because I'd wanted a load of DVDs for Christmas and she's just like, I forgot to wrap these, but you can have them now, which was nice. I I'm noticing a new trend though, that they have a Christmas Eve box. Um, somebody I used to work with, uh, they did a thing where uh, they'd all have matching Christmas jammies um, and they'd have a Christmas film to watch together. And it's really a cute idea um, at my former employer, uh, anyone that wanted to, uh, could do a secret Santa. So obviously you'd put, put your name in and then you'd have a name randomly drawn for you. All right. So with the secret Santa at work, um, we'd usually open up the secret Santa gift. Uh, 
I remember there was one colleague that was like, no, no, you have to wait until Christmas Day. Like, there's some people that are very strict on the whole not opening till Christmas Day, which honestly, just do what you want. Uh, there is also a difference there. Like when I was growing up, I was like in the Girl Scouts and we did Secret Santa then. Um, what we'd do, we'd have someone that we'd pick for and then we'd get them like three or four different gifts, like small ones that like, we had like a set budget. Um, and then on the last gift would be when we'd meet up before uh, Christmas break and we'd reveal who we were as the secret Santa. Whereas over here, you don't actually know who gives you the gift. And I remember being like, I really wanna know who got me this because I really wanna thank him. Um, I remember doing it when I worked at a library too. Um, I, do, I think we just all like brought in a random gift though. It wasn't really necessary. It was kind of a secret Santa, but you'd bring in a gift and then um, you just randomly pick one. Uh, from a pile that that was a lot of fun I, I wish I could remember it more another thing uh, that's a difference uh, gifts for Santa like you know how for example um, just pretend this is like a glass of sherry uh, in the UK you give a mince pie a glass of sherry and leave a carrot for Rudolph um, whereas in the States, it's a glass of milk and a plate of cookies. And I do remember giving like a bowl of baby carrots to the reindeer. Um, another story I have, um, same colleague um, with their daughter, uh, they decided to do something really cute for her. I don't, I don't think it was her first Christmas, but it was like the first Christmas where she, you know, the excitement at Santa was real. And they did hoof prints in the garden, in their back garden. I think it had snowed um, where she lives. She's more likely to get snow than where I currently live. Um, but she put hoof prints in, they put her and her husband put hoof prints in the, in the, on the ground. And then they like sprinkled bits of carrots like to show that the uh, reindeer had eaten the carrots that they left out. So I thought it was really cute. And I think it's nice doing things like that for, for kids to like kind of keep the magic of it alive. Um, but yeah, um, the next part, I know I'm, I sort of mentioned this earlier about opening presents, um, but th this is on the actual Christmas day. Like some people don't open them first thing in the morning. Um, if you have family coming over, uh, I've been told that it's like you wait until after you've had your Christmas dinner, which is like can be at lunchtime because dinner is another way of saying lunch over here. Um, and I, I, as a kid, I can't even imagine that as like not being allowed to open presents until afternoon, which in some ways is probably good for parents because it means they're not going to get woken up at the crack of dawn wanting their Christmas presents like I tried to do a few times as a kid. Uh, so another difference with uh, Christmas in the UK between the US, I've noticed Robins are a huge uh, thing at Christmas uh, because they're a sign of winter in the UK. Um, I mean, granted, I, I tend to see them all year round, but Robins actually look completely different to the Robins that um, are in the States. Uh, I'll put an example to show the two birds, just so you know what I'm on about. Um, but in the States, robins are actually a sign of spring. And God, I remember even in February, you'd see like 20 of them out in like, just looking for worms in, in the grass. And it's like, you'd be like, oh, it's time for spring. Spring's coming soon. And it could be not till like April till it would warm up. And I mean, I've gotten snow as or late as, April as well uh, back home but um, the main difference I think is the size and they both have red bellies but um, the coloring is different too like honestly American robins are really ugly when you think about it because 
you get these robins here and they got these little petite feet, a big, big belly, but are like, look really soft and gentle and I think are really cute. Um, I know they tend to refer to robins as the gardener's friend, which, so whenever I'm out in the garden, I've, I remember I was doing power washing of the, um, patio that we have in the middle and there was a robin basically following me around I think hoping for some worms to pop up. I don't know if he ever got any though. Um, Christmas dinner. That's that's a big difference I can say for sure. Um, when I came over here I think my first Christmas it was like oh what do you have at for Christmas and it's like oh sometimes we have turkey sometimes we have ham and it was like what do you mean you don't have turkey and it's like well we have turkey at Thanksgiving so we don't always have it at Christmas because those are so close together you don't want to have such a massive meal um I usually liked what um my family did we usually would get like a Sometimes there'd be turkey, but other times we'd have like a honey roast ham and that was always so delicious. And even in our household now, we don't tend to have turkey because my husband's not a big fan of it. It's, and we tend to prefer stuff like gammon or um, a beef roast. We've done that a few times. We've even gone out to dinner on Christmas. Um, we've gone to an Indian restaurant a few times, which... I know I, I think we was ridiculed by a few colleagues for that, but it was like we didn't have to cook anything, didn't have to clean up, and it was something we enjoyed. It, it was still like nice and festive. Um, this year, obviously, it's a bit different with where I'm at in a tier three area. Things are closed, so you can do a takeaway, but yeah, we're cooking. Um, anyway, besides... Uh, the turkey being the main difference as far as we may or may not have that. Um, we had pigs and blanket, um, which is bacon wrapped around little sausages, which I don't know what we call them in the States. I just know we don't call them pigs and blanket because pigs and blanket in the States is like a hot dog wrapped in dough, which is usually like a croissant dough. Um, I remember that's something we used to eat for dinner as a kid. Oh, I loved it. It was nice it was cooked in the oven but um the pigs in the blanket like bacon wrapped sausages are just simply that you just stick them in the oven whereas i think we usually had like brown sugar and maple on them i know my aunt used to always bring them uh to christmas gatherings and we just would demolish them it's like they they didn't last long they were like an absolute favorite it was like a little I guess appetizer for us. Um, and other things are like different sides, like Brussels sprouts are a huge thing at Christmas. Whereas I know I've had Brussels sprouts in the States, but it wasn't at Christmas. I actually, I used to hate Brussels sprouts. Obviously my taste buds are different um, from when I was a kid, but um, plus I like to think of them as little tiny cabbages or something. Uh, the other thing, at least in our household, is Yorkshire puddings. You always have to have Yorkshire pudding. Uh, if you're having a Sunday roast or Christmas, we have to have Yorkshire pudding. I'm usually the one to make them because apparently I, mine are pretty good. So uh, I don't do anything fancy like Jamie Oliver, who I think has just botched the idea of Yorkshires by adding in mustard or something I think or, or no maybe that was his toad in the hole recipe but it's like it's just simple it's just eggs milk flour a bit of salt and pepper that's all you need um and it's utterly delicious um let's see uh roast potatoes that is a big difference always usually mash and roast potatoes but I think back home we didn't have roast potatoes. I don't think I ever really had a roasted potato till I came over here. I mean, cause we, we'd think, but we'd have it as like mash. We'd have it as a baked potato. Um, and then like red potatoes were usually like semi mashed with a lot of like 
garlic and herb on there. But I'm digressing because that has nothing to do with the Christmas side of things. Anyway, um, so that's a big difference. Um, I know it's always been a very fancy setup, like looking nice and everything. Um, table fully set, food all put out and passing stuff around, whereas it was always like a buffet style where I'm from. And I don't know if it was different with other families in the States, but that's just how we did it. In any get togethers, we do like a buffet style. Um, and I liked it that way. Cause it's like, then you could choose what you wanted to have. You didn't feel obligated to have everything that was on the table. Um, and you, people usually went for seconds and thirds. That's a big Thanksgiving thing as well. But, um, with pudding or dessert, um, there's a big difference, I'd say. Um, like, where I'm from, there's like all kinds of Christmas cookies that are made. Christmas cookie exchange is a big thing. I ne I've never participated in it, but we always made loads of cookies to, I guess, share with the family. And then there'd be um, pecan pie and pumpkin pie. Uh, my grandpa would usually bring some sort of fruit pie to a family gathering. He did this all year round, but he'd always bring the Sherry's pumpkin pie and pecan pie and sometimes lemon meringue or cherry, possibly apple. Um, I think those were the main ones. I'm pretty sure there was something chocolate related. That could have been stuff I started making. Over here, you have... Christmas cake, which is basically a fruit cake with like a marzipan and royal icing topping. Um, there is mince pies, which actually aren't too bad. Um, I didn't like them when I first came over, but obviously they've grown on me. Um, Yule log, which is basically like a chocolate uh, coated Swiss roll. Um, those are delicious. Uh, cookies are usually shortbread. I think you don't, didn't, we don't tend to do too many variants. I usually like to make snickerdoodles, which is like a cinnamon sugar cookie. Um, because I read in a book somewhere that it was a Christmas, um, uh, German, uh, origin Christmas cookie. And it's my dad's favorite. Um, I love cinnamon as well. So, um, but pumpkin and pecan pie are definitely not a thing over here. Um, some people, the first time they try pumpkin is usually when I bake something with pumpkin in it. Um, let's see. Uh, I think that's it on the dessert side. Oh, before I forget, there's also usually, uh, when you have the uh, Christmas cake, you have it with custard or brandy sauce, um, which is another difference. I think if we ever had it, we'd have it with like whipped cream, maybe ice cream, but you'd have like a slice of pumpkin pie and you just like cover it with a load of uh, whipped cream from one of those uh, aerosol cans. Uh, Christmas stockings, I wrote about this in my blog saying that it's not as common over here, which I think is actually incorrect. Um, my, we, my husband, when I first met him, they didn't do stockings, but that's because my husband obviously was too old for a stocking. But he said when he was younger, he had like this huge gym sock that would be filled with little trinkets and orange, that sort of thing. Um, and it'd be what he could open while everybody else was still asleep. Um, whereas we have the stockings at home, but it wouldn't necessarily be in your room. Cause you could also, you'd have the stocking in your room sometimes, I think over here. Um, we wouldn't have oranges in it. There'd usually be like a massive, um, peppermint stick in there. There was always some sort of form of peppermint, little chocolates and little toys that were just small enough to go in there or presents like that. Um, but it would be the first thing I'd open, I think, just cause that's what I like to open. 
Although occasionally I'd forget and then it's like, oh, I got my stocking. So I'd have more stuff to open, but um, yeah, I, well, I'd usually wait for everybody to, to get up and I would be the one waiting because I'm, I was always so excited to, for Christmas day. Uh, I mentioned, already mentioned about cookies versus biscuits. Um, I'm trying to think. What else? Did, oh, that that's another thing with the um, with the cookies. Um, I'm just gonna say cookies because that's how I've always said it. Um, like it or hate it, I don't care. <laughs> uh, so there'd be certain ones we'd make every year as it as it was a part of Christmas. Um, it would be. Like where I started doing um, the snickerdoodle cookies. Um, there'd also be sugar cookies, gingerbread men. I'm, you know, they probably do make them over here at Christmas time. Now that I think about it with those two. But that's more like with your family. I don't tend to see it that much. Gingerbread tends to be sold all year round. You just don't necessarily have it as a gingerbread man. Um... But the sugar cookies would usually be like the kind that you'd have to cut out and then put sprinkles on and bake. Um, I remember we had this like old ice cream bucket because yeah, you'd get you get ice cream by the bucket, and it was filled with all the cookie cutters that my mom had collected over the years. Um, gingerbread house that was another one that. Um, we do, I remember one of my mom's cousins had like a gingerbread making party where you'd like make your own gingerbread house. And I remember one of my cousins, her daughter, did like a Norman Bates themed one. I always thought that was so funny. Um, that's actually a lot of fun to do, especially as a kid. Um, I don't know if we ever ate it though, because it, it'd just be set out and obviously that wouldn't be good after a while. Um, so I don't know if that, like, what, what people do over here if they make gingerbread, if they just eat it straight away or not. Um, gingerbread houses, I should say. Another cookie that, um, we would make, it'd be, like, little peanut butter cups. Um, not peanut butter cups, but little peanut butter cookies that, like, have a bit pressed in and have, like, a Hershey's Kiss on top. It was usually a Hershey's Kiss. Uh, Mexican... Wedding cookies, which were usually like an almond cookie that was either in a crescent shape or in a ball and it'd be coated in um, icing sugar or powdered sugar, as we call it. Uh, peppermint bark was another thing because peppermint was such a big thing. It'd be like a coating of chocolate with bits of peppermint in it or a peppermint layer. I'm not big on that because I don't like mint and chocolate together. Um, but I knew my parents liked it. There'd also be chocolate covered pretzels. Um, God, those are good. I definitely like those. And then a thing called Linzer cookies, but I think the ones over here, you have jam in it, but what we would make, it would just be certain shapes. And it was like a butter cookie. Um, that's the best way I can think to describe it. Um, yeah, I think that's... Oh, stolen's a, a thing over here around Christmas. I, I don't think we have that, but I noticed that there's a lot of things with desserts over here. Obviously, they have, like, the long tradition, long English tradition, or it's got some sort of European connection, like, um, stolen, Stalin, however you say it, uh, what else? There was something else in my head and I've forgotten. I, I, maybe it's not with the, the food, but different uh, traditions. Um, Christmas carols. Um, now, I don't know if it used to be a thing over here. I know they, Christmas carols has been a, a thing where you go to it and visit it. Um, but... Like, I think Christmas Carol with kids, or you were part of a carols group. We used to have people that come door to door. Um, there was actually 
someone that lived down the street. I knew him because I was friends with his kids. He had triplets. Um, and he was a teacher in the school district I was a part of. And he'd get his class together. He taught sixth grade. And he'd get his class together, or possibly his team, I guess. I don't know if they did volunteers. Probably did do volunteers. But they'd go around our neighborhood door-to-door uh, -door and sing Christmas carols. Um, and that was always fun um, to see. And then I remember one time participating, like they let me, like I, I answered the door and they let me come with afterwards. <laughs> I do remember we were singing um, Dashing Through the Snow and I was doing the version where you add stuff in. <laughs> uh, the teacher's wife actually <laughs> hands over my mouth to stop me doing it because I didn't realize we weren't doing that version. I was really little. I can't remember how little I was, but I was just like, well, I want to see that one. Um, slides. Um, this could also be something that's different depending on where you live in the UK, but where I'm from, we used to absolutely love going around, um, checking out different Christmas lights that people put up because there'd be some people, they, they'd go all out. Um, there was one, there's one guy, he lives very close to where my aunt and uncle used to live. Uh, he'd basically have Santa's workshop in his garage and in his front garden. And people would be lined up to just drive by and look at it. It was that popular. Um, there was another one he did this near one of the schools. I don't know if it was different every year, but I do remember it was like a wintry wonderland where they were actually like moving, um, these like figures that were like skating on ice, snowboarding, that sort of thing. And it was really cool. And obviously he'd have spotlights all over the place to like show it. Um, and there'd be other people that just, you know, would have really nice lights out. Um, I remember when I got older, it started being the, like the blow up stuff. Like you'd have the blow up snow globe, Santa, snowman, which I, I don't like those if I'm honest. But yeah, I, I don't see it as much here, but it could be just where we're at. There's not really much room to put stuff out front. Um, usually because most places here, it's a very small garden in front and then you have all the garden in the back. Sometimes you don't have much garden at all. It just depends on where you live. Um, not to mention different cultures as well. Uh, but it's nice seeing lights every once in a while. I think, uh, I do notice, um, is Christmas jumpers or, uh, Christmas sweaters like I would wear them all throughout the month of December there was never like one special day to wear it but here there's an actual official Christmas jumper day and it's kind of mixed between whether you have, have like a nice jumper on like this I mean granted this is somewhat silly with like the little baubles there but um you also have competitions of the ugliest Christmas sweater um I remember my husband had one. I'm so glad we got rid of it. He got it from Sainsbury's and it was like Santa with sunglasses on and like chains and instead of ho ho ho, it was yo yo yo. It was meant to be like a gangster Santa. It was just so dumb. <laughs> I hated it. I It just was cringy. Um, he rarely ever wore it too, so I think we, we ended up getting rid of it, I think, and he forgot that he got rid of it because he was asking me about it earlier this this uh, month, but. Mad Friday. Uh, Mad Friday in the UK is where it's nuts because everyone's trying to finish up their Christmas shopping. And then it's usually, it's the last Friday before Christmas, so everyone's meeting up in the pubs, getting absolutely sloshed usually meeting up with friends um, and just having fun before they 
they celebrate Christmas with their family. Um, Pantomime is um, children's entertainment theater. Um, it'd usually be some sort of famous children's story that's acted out, but in a very comedic way. Um, there have been very well-known celebrities that have gotten involved in it, like um, John Barrowman from um, Torchwood and uh, Doctor Who. Uh, he, I remember seeing him be a part of it. But it was one of those things where uh, kids would all get together and go. Um, I honestly, I wish I knew more about it beyond that. I don't know if like there's audience participation or anything. Um, it's just very, very popular around this time of year. Um, maybe one day I'll find out. I don't know if I didn't like it, but obviously it's more for children. So that's really all it is. Um, uh, there's also, besides Christmas, there's Boxing Day. Uh, in the UK, um, it, it's, which is the day after Christmas, uh, it's usually, it, it's considered another holiday here in the UK, whereas in the States, it's just the day after Christmas. I, I know it as one of the most busiest days where people are just trying to return gifts they don't want, or they're going out to eat with family that are in town. But here is just another holiday. Um, and generally most people are entitled to that day off of work unless they work in a certain industry. Um, I don't know if restaurants or pubs would be open. I know if you were working in some sort of corporation, you'd be off. Um, but there would be, fo sometimes football's played on TV or like locally. Um, I don't know if Mike's ever gone to a game when it's been a Boxing Day football game. Um, I think usually he prefers the idea of watching it from home because it's just so damn cold out. Um, but historically with Boxing Day, uh, it's a day in which the needy would be given money or boxes of good. Um, I don't, it's not really practiced the same now. I know there's like times where there'd be like a charity box to give at Christmas to needy families, but that'd be like the lead up to Christmas. So it's, I guess, done in a different way now. It would be Christmas, uh, Christmas markets. Um, Christmas markets are usually in the lead up to Christmas um, in different towns. It'd be basically like a German, Christ German Christmas market or, a, or German style. We don't have anything like that in the States. Uh, we would have craft fairs months in advance before Christmas. It could be related to it, um, but that'd be like from autumn up until Christmas and even we tend to do that all year round. But um, that's a, Christmas markets are definitely a European influence. Um, but I've been to a few actually kind of nice um, if it's not too busy. Um, I've been to Leeds, I've been to York and Manchester as far as their Christmas markets go. Um, and usually all like, there'd be like wooden stalls they would have set up with trinkets or crafts. Uh, there'd be food stalls. Um, hot chocolate. Uh, I remember, I think it was the one in Manchester having, I had warm stolen uh, with custard from one. It was like a massive piece of it. And then there'd also be, it'd be very popular to have German sausage um, of some kind. Uh, some of the uh, Christmas markets would have a makeshift pub. I remember the one in Leeds had like a huge line out the door. Um, There'd also be other things like sweet stalls that had like marshmallows and fudge. Um, just really all kinds of like little Christmassy things. Uh, the Manchester one is huge, like it's miles long, I want to say. Um, 
The one I've really enjoyed though has been York. Um, I generally love York overall. Um, love visiting there any time of year, but it's... So the last thing I wanna talk about is with sailing. Um, I remember hearing it in a song, uh, or a Christmas Carol really. Um, but never really knew what it meant. Um, so apparently I got this from verychristmas.com, I think is the website. I'll have to double check that. It's a very ancient custom. Um, the word was sail comes from the Anglo-Saxon phrase ways hail, if I'm saying that right, means good health. Um, but it would be like a type of drink, which was made of mulled ale, curdled cream, sounds delicious, roasted apples, eggs, cloves, ginger, nutmeg, and sugar. Um, it was served from huge bowls, often made of silver or pewter. Now, it's definitely not something that's really done today. I guess, the, I don't know if like eggnog's a variation on that. Um, but I've never known anyone to do that. I think it's probably more of a Southern thing as well, um, if they still do it because of like where Somerset is with the apples. Um, but it now brings new meaning to the Christmas carol about here we come a sailing along the leaves so green. Here we come a sailing so fair to be seen. Love and joy come to you and to you your whale sail too. Oh God, I know it's horrible. Don't ask. I'm usually a better singer than that, but now I know what it means as far as good health as well as type of drink. So, for me. This has just been, you know, my experience with Christmas in the UK and the US. I mean, there are some differences and some similarities. Oh, before I forget, I can't believe I'm actually forgetting to mention this. Christmas crackers. Why is that not even mentioned? It should be in there. Uh, Christmas crackers are something I absolutely love in the UK where we don't have in the States. We don't have anything quite that fun. I think the closest we get is uh, the wishbone of turkey and you try and break it, which is very painful um, and doesn't come with any prices or a cute hat to wear. Anyway, um, let me know if there's any Christmas traditions that, you know, I maybe didn't mention through, through the UK or even the US or even some other culture, because um, obviously I only know from my own experience and I'm just interested like I know Japan KFC is a big thing uh, at Christmas um, but it's like what other what do other countries tend to do and like how do they tend to celebrate so uh, that's it for me uh, till next time bye just has like a nice feel at Christmas what the hell home um uh, where it goes here we come sailing along the leaves so green come on uh, i don't know hi mm. because you have warm people at the not halal haven't you hmm? the mint in them's not halal is it i don't know It's reindeer mint. Shut up. <laughs> Let me go away.